So at the moment, we're working in two fields. So by training and by trade, I'm a Drosophila geneticist. So I work on fruit flies and have done so for gosh, 40 years, a long time. And my Drosophila work now is mostly taking, taking advantage of the fact that we sequenced the complete genome of Drosophila melanogasta in, well, published in 2000. And now we have the, the sequences of another 11 species. So most of my current research is involved with the analysis of these sequences. And in, in particular, in, interested in mechanism, mechanisms of chromosome evolution. But I also have a fly lab downstairs where we're doing experimental work. Um, but it's all fairly related. I mean, we're, we're looking at gene structure, gene organization in, in Drosophila. And I have a postdoc um, who's working on the interactions between viruses and Drosophila. The Drosophila has a number of viruses in the wild, and we're trying to work out what the response of the fly is to a viral infection. But I have another career in informatics, um, which began, oh, probably about 20 years ago, really by chance. And I got involved very early in the nucleotide sequence databases and ended up by being employed by the newly founded European Bioinformatics Institute in 1993, I think, or 1994. And I worked there actually half-time, or technically half-time, uh, for six years, and I still have a research group there. And that's only down the road, 10 miles down the road at Hingston, so it's quite close. So I had these two careers, and I have a database group here, the Flybase, which is the community database for Drosophila, uh, which is funded from the states, but um, we have a group of, I think, eight people uh, working on, on Flybase here. And I'm very involved in another big database, and essentially inf infrastructure pro project funded by the NIH called, called the Gene Ontology, and uh, I'm one of the four PIs of the of the Go project, and I have people working on that here as well. So I have these two two careers: one one doing experimental work, and one doing informatics work. And most of my collaborations are with North America in, in the U.S. I have three NIH grants uh, from the U.S. National Inst Institutes of Health, and all of those are essentially run from from the U.S. And so I have three big U.S. collaborations. Um, Experimentally, the work is not so collaborative. We do collaborate a bit, but most of that, most of that is done here. When I was a young guy starting out in research, in genetics, I mean, 40 years ago, I could, go, I, I could go to the library of this department, which su subscribed to every serious journal in the field, on a Saturday morning about 9 o'clock, and I could read every paper in almost the entire field of genetics which had been come in in the previous week and then go down and have a leisurely pint of beer at about one o'clock. The Solar Price, who's a remarkable, remarkable man who I think ended up in Yale, published a book I think in the 60s called either Little, si Little Science, Big Science or Big Science, Little Science, I can't remember. And he showed that the scientific li literature has been doubling about with a period of about, of about 10 years since the beginning of the literature, which is in the late 17th century, the founding of the Filtrans of the Royal Society. Um, so that in my lifetime, I've, I, I, I've seen four, four or five, nearly five doublings of the scientific literature. And it is simply, would simply be impossible uh, for me to at to do what I could do 40 years ago uh, and keep on top of it but by going to a library and flicking through uh, paper copies of the journal. So I need ways of finding lit the literature and uh, that uh, relies uh, almost entirely these days uh, on some sort of computational analysis. Uh, and it, what we're using, well, at least what I'm using now, is fairly, fairly crude, it's looking, looking at the daily output of Medline uh, and using keywords. 
which is pretty unsatisfactory and uh, gets lots of false positives. And I know because I, by chance, come across papers which they don't report to me, uh, has false negatives. So I think more sophisticated NLP techniques are going to be required you know, sim by scientists simply to keep current with the literature. Um, and in particular, if a scientist, as frequently happens, has to research a new field, one with which she's not familiar, uh, and has to go back in the liter literature to find out what has been published, uh, then it's even more important that you have uh, good searching techniques. But it's more than that. I'm very much involved in the curation uh, of the of Flybase, which is a community community database for Microsoft, funded by the NIH, and I have upstairs five curators working on this. And what these curators do is abstract information uh, from the lit literature, and in a very controlled manner, put this in the database. Um, and this is extremely tedious and very expensive um, and because people are expensive uh, and uh, one struggles to keep up. In fact, we can't keep up uh, and we have to constantly triage the lit literature and decide what we're going to curate and what we're not going to curate simply because of the time. And there are now being developed uh, based upon computational tools uh, that are now being developed techniques uh, which will actually aid the, this curation that, that will take, for example, what started off, off life as a, as a PDF file um, of a scientific paper, will convert that to ASCII, ASCII text and actually mark it up on the screen uh, to highlight various bits of information in that text to help a curator actually then extract that information and put it in the database. But that's limited entirely uh, by the uh, free availability um, of PDF files. It's not strictly true uh, in that even a PDF file from Elsevier we can use in-house, uh, but we can't make it publicly available. So we have on our archives here, uh, on, on, on our hard disks, 15,000, 20,000 PDF files um, in the field of Drosophila, which we'd love to make available t to the community, uh, but we can't do that. Uh, we can use them in-house, uh, but we can't make these tools uh, available to the community at large, and that seems a pity.